Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from the world of the digital infrastructure industry. And we've got a lot of thought leaders on tap today, including my new friend, Mr. David Armistead. David is the Senior Vice President of Sales at DC Blocks. And we are live, lest I forget, we are coming to you live from Data Cloud USA in the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. David, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Outstanding. So David, we have got a lot to talk about. You and I unpacked a few things just before the camera started rolling. So lots going on here. Um, uh, we're we're going to talk about uh, hyperscale data center campuses. I want to talk about the, your edge secondary markets, subsea landing stations, DC blocks. You guys have your hands in a, in a lot of things. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about DC Blocks and um, you know how you got from kind of these these tertiary secondary markets uh, and landing stations and ultimately this hyperscale data center campuses. Yeah, happy to. So DC Blocks has really evolved, I would say over the last four to five years. Now the company is 10 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, the current leadership has been in place since uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And when we first started out, it was all about creating uh, edge data centers in secondary markets, mm -hmm. underserved markets, mm -hmm. and, and that was in the southeastern United States. Mm -hmm. um, we now have five data centers in the southeastern United States, and one of them that we launched a couple of years ago is pretty special. It's not just a data center, it's also a subsea cable landing station, mm -hmm. and that's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, with that, we have two hyperscalers that have come into that facility. Uh, Google and Meta, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have three cables uh, from those customers that are landing in Myrtle Beach. When we did that for the hyperscalers, one of the things they asked us to do was to um, connect them back to the IX in Atlanta, um, and so we constructed a dark fiber route mm -hmm. between Myrtle Beach and Atlanta. Um, with our execution on these edge data centers and what we did in Myrtle Beach with the cable landing station, uh, hyperscalers asked us to do more and our financial backers asked us to do more. And so we have embarked on uh, hyperscale data centers. Uh -huh. uh, we have four of those campuses in development. Two are in the Atlanta market. Uh, one on the west side in mm -hmm. Lithia Springs and then one on the, on the east side in um, near Conyers, Georgia. Both of those are going to be way bigger than what we've done at the edge. Uh -huh. You know, the edge data centers continue to serve enterprises in those markets. Yeah. Those could be anything from a megawatt to five megawatts, uh, typically serving hospital systems, universities, manufacturers. Yes. Um, but for the for the hyperscale data centers, instead of one to five megawatts, these are 200 to 300 megawatts. <laughs> so it's an order of magnitude yeah, yeah. Uh, bigger. Yeah. And, um, and, and we are uh, interconnecting those with fiber, uh, just like we would interconnect all of our edge data centers. Um, so really we have our edge data centers, which we continue to serve and operate. We mm -hmm. have our cable landing stations, some dark fiber interconnectivity, and now the hyperscale data centers. I would add the um, one other a way that we're serving hyperscalers is with um, instead of the two to three hundred megawatt sites, uh, they want network edge nodes, and so those can be five to ten megawatts yeah. single tenant facilities, and we have those placed in the southeastern United States as well. So those hyperscalers are pretty needy, huh? <laughs> they they need a lot of power, and they needed it yesterday. Yeah, right. So um, you know we are we are currently selling. 2027 power i believe it uh because yeah. that's you know everything that is available and coming online in 25 and 26 is largely spoken for yeah, no, um, that is that is unsurprising, and congratulations. It sounds like you guys are doing uh, some really, really great things right now. But you mentioned a couple of things, and so I'm going to go off script as uh, as, sure. as I sometimes do. Um, with with regard to your edge uh, you know, data center initiatives and and some of these these secondary markets, and you mentioned like hospitals and, and universities. I think you mentioned as well. Um, we every conversation that I've had at Data Cloud USA has got an AI component, and what I would like for for you to do is to kind of help me marry these edge data centers that are that are feeding that are serving these hospital organizations as it relates to AI, um, because as I understand it, uh, and having talked to you know a dozen folks here already, you know. 
uh, the, the miracles of AI are happening on the operating room floor. They are happening, uh, you know, in, in, in hospitals and things like that. And unless we have the, the capability of, of these, uh, these edge data centers kind of like in the backyard of these hospitals, then, then the kind of, the, again, those miracles are the dream of AI and the advancement of, of uh, you know, the meta, uh, of medicine doesn't happen unless, unless they're there. Um, is that how you see it as well? We do, and we see it mostly coming from research hospitals. Yes. So, for example, uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham, which is where I live, mm -hmm. they're one of our customers, and UAB does a lot of research yeah. um, in in their uh, healthcare uh, system. Yeah. And and they do that in our facility. What that has meant is um, really upscoping the capabilities at the site. So mm -hmm. historically, enterprises might need 6KW, 8KW yes. at the cabinet. Um, we have for uh, for these applications, high performance compute capabilities where we've brought in more power to the cabinet and that also necessitates bringing in cooling capabilities. Yeah. So, you know, we made an investment in a chilled water plant for the site to be able to provide that service to that type of application for the for the research hospitals and research departments um, at the university. So not just not just in the healthcare world. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you guys are uh, you guys are kind of innovating in lockstep with uh, with the, with your customers, which I find you know I mean I I don't know how you because because technology is advancing as as quickly as it is I don't know how you uh, you you don't do that you you have to innovate uh, right alongside your customers. Well, right alongside with our customers is exactly the way to say it because yeah. we this is not the the. This is not a situation where we can build it and they will come. Right. Because if we did that, we would have built a legacy <laughs> um, infrastructure that was no longer applicable. Yeah. And so yeah. now it is partnering with customers on the infrastructure design mm -hmm. and then building that to to the specs of what they need and what they're going to need for the for the coming years. So it's future proofed a little bit, but we're going to have to continue to evolve and innovate all along the way. And it's another really, really interesting point because like if you do it too soon, it's obsolete by the time you've got folks, you know, uh, moving in. Uh, so do, like uh, innovating again in lockstep with your customers uh, seems like the smartest way to go about doing things. We have to do it that way. Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay, so, uh, la okay. Future of AI and uh, digital infrastructure. Where do you see all this going? I think that, um, you know, whereas we were talking about our enterprise edge data centers, needing you know six or eight kw where we have um, some of the uh, healthcare and and other research components coming in needing more density at the cabinet we were getting into the mid 30s or mm -hmm. even 40s uh, mm -hmm. on the kw um, the design for ai especially uh, for the training mod modules that are happening at the core sites um, those designs are now at 130 kw today of, of what we're yeah. of what we're putting in, um, how that also extends out to the edge back where we came from is that some of the inference models can be run there. You mm -hmm. know, those are mm -hmm. low latency applications that that need to deliver to customers who are in those regions. And yeah. so it's it's not just um, megawatts at the at the hyperscale sites. It's also extending back to the edge where we're already present. Yeah, wow, David. Uh, we we should do this again. I feel like a year from now, a year from now, we'll we'll, we'll be talking about uh, a lot of this and some of your uh, uh, your implementation and things like that. But thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay connected. Stay happy and healthy. And we'll see you soon.